About two years ago, we met Greg Carr, who's the director of the, the Gore and Gosa Restoration Project. And he became interested in the Intermountain Bird Observatory and what, what we do. He was especially, especially very interested in our education work with students and our international focus, where we bring students to, uh, to bird migration sites in other countries, sort of major bird migration sites in other countries, and train them. He was very interested in that. But also, I think he was very, very impressed with the work that we do on bird migration at Lucky Peak. He visited the Lucky Peak site a year and a half or so ago, and, um, and right after that, made a financial commitment to have us begin you know, working in, in Gorongosa. Three, two, one. Greg Carr has chosen to use Gorongosa Park as a conservation project, as well as a humanitarian project. So he's combining, in a similar way that IBO does, he's combining that, that uh, biological research with sort of humanitarian efforts, providing careers for people, providing jobs, right in this national park. There he goes. What we're hoping to do in Gorongosa is to help increase their knowledge of birds in the park through a combination of an inventory, um, but also some research projects, and then also adding to that, like we do here at Lucky Peak and in some of our other projects, adding an outreach and education component. I'd love to bring what we do at IBO and that sort of hands-on science aspect to their education efforts. One of our goals is to promote exchange of, of students, not only Boise State students traveling to Africa and studying at Gorongosa, but also uh, the training of Mozambican students. And we began that this year by bringing a, a young lady from Mozambique to study with us here in Idaho, you know, at the Intermountain Bird Observatory, and her name is Dominique. We brought Dominique to Idaho to train with us in, in uh, sort of field techniques, studying birds, with the hope and intention that she would return to Africa and work at Gorongosa and eventually become one of the Gorongosa research staff. I was well informed before I came, of course, so I knew that I would be living in a tent and, and up in the mountains holding birds, bending birds, uh, monitoring the migration because it's kind of the same thing that we want to do in Gorongosa. So I'm very happy to be here and not only sitting and having lessons but doing, having practicing. In Mozambique I don't think that we have any uh, birds uh, migration monitoring so Gorongosa is going to be the first one and I'm so glad to be the first one doing that so we can teach other people, engage more people in this, and maybe change some of the minds about birds and other things. I think for young women in Mozambique, Dominique is going to be a really great example of, you know, somebody who is going to have a career in the sciences. And I think, especially in Mozambique, in the culture, it's a little hard for women to have careers like that. She's a real go-getter, and so I think she'll be a good example to other young women who want to maybe do the same thing but are sort of afraid to try. I mean, I'm really excited, I think, from a, a couple different angles. So selfishly, as a bird watcher, to be able to go to a place like Gorongosa where there are so many different species is, is very exciting. But as a scientist, there's a, a chance for discovery, which I think is really exciting. The infrastructure is incredible at the park. There's not only housing, but there's laboratory space uh, and an ecosystem that's just waiting to be studied. Greg Carr is an amazing humanitarian and philanthropist and uh, the fact that he has devoted his, his life to working with the people and the park there in Mozambique is, is pretty incredible. It's inspiring to our faculty and to our students and it gives us uh, an entree to, to do our good work as well and to partner with him and we're grateful for his, for his interest and the opportunity.